Coming up, hold on to your socks. Literally, we're taking a look back at some of the best health from home throughout the coronavirus pandemic. We'll check in on your physical, mental, and nutritional health with the experts. Public health officials share their thoughts. We'll share how to keep your home and car clean. And if you impulse bought these, get ready to sweat it because we'll show you how to use them today on SoFlow Health. Hello and welcome to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We are in my backyard and I'm here to trim my crepe myrtle because much like many of our hairs, it's a little overgrown. But that's not the reason we're at home today because you might ask, well, Hunter, Miami-Dade and Broward County are opening back up. Why are you staying home? Well, first of all, the best thing you can do to keep yourself safe is to stay home and stay safe. It's also just time to bring you a look back of where we've come throughout quarantine. It's been 10, 12 weeks. I don't know, I'm losing track. But we're going to take a look back today at all of the great information that we've received from our contributors. And we'll start off with the doctors and the experts that have helped keep us safe by sifting through all of the noise out there to bring us just the facts. Many of us may still be wondering just what those tests we can take mean and how accurate they are. And even though we are opening up, the danger of COVID-19 is still very real. Luckily, back in April, Dr. Terry Adaram and Dr. Alberto Caban Martinez were there to help us. We do know that uh, from influenza, that by covering your face, um, you can prevent droplets from going, you know, pretty far um, right. as opposed to being kept By closer to the face. Right. right. So what that's meant to do is to protect other people from you. There are a lot of people who um, are what we call pre-symptomatic or not symptomatic, meaning that they may be infected but not really develop symptoms or just be in the period right before they do develop symptoms. But during that time, they can still transmit virus. So you may be feeling well and you say, okay, I'm going to go out to the supermarket, right. but really you're spewing virus particles um, to other people. And that's why it's so critical that everybody, no matter who you are, where you are, that you stay at least six feet away from another person and actually it's better if you stay home. You know, I think it's really important that you pay attention to, you know, making sure that the mask fits properly, um, that, um, that you wash your hands before putting the mask on, and then after taking the mask off. Um, hand washing is so critical, 20 seconds with soap and water um, mm -hmm. is very important. Hand washing. Um, people might ask, well, why should I wash my hands with soap and water when I could use hand sanitizer or something that has alcohol on it to kill uh, the bacteria? What is hand washing specifically for 20 seconds doing for us? I think you can use both. Mm -hmm. Hand sanitizer, if you're going to use it, needs to be at least 60% alcohol. And what people may not think about is that when you apply it to your hands, you need to let it dry for several seconds. The other thing is hand sanitizer may neutralize the virus, but it doesn't get it off your hands. So it disintegrates the outer coat, I should say, okay. of the virus. And then you're washing your hands. Like it, mechanically, you're getting that virus off your hands. Right. So if you can't wash your hands with soap, um, hand sanitizer is fine, um, but at least 60% alcohol. Right. So right now for COVID-19, there's sort of these two tests Maybe viewers are most familiar with the nasal swab we see a lot on TV. Um, that type of testing gives us information about whether or not you have the virus in your body. There's another type of testing which we call the antibody testing, um, which is uh, a way of looking at if you've been exposed to the virus. It's very challenging, you know, to, to try to predict now since this is what we call like a novel virus. It's brand new, you know, our bodies have not seen it before. So how do we react um, and how those changes over time are really important critical questions that, you know, these projects will be able to address. So I didn't spend most of my time in quarantine gardening. Oh well, I'm doing it now. It was thanks to many amazing people like Dr. Adaram and Dr. Kuban that we were able to bring you only the best information regarding COVID-19, which helped us rest easy knowing that we were giving you fact-based information. And another heaping helping of, well, help came from our experts that helped us adapt to an almost instant isolation. 
Dr. Sam Rasool was one of the many experts watching our back and protecting our neck while we were at home. Here his goal was to help us undo a lot of what we may have done while working from home. What you want to do is a very simple yet forgotten stretch for the neck. You can take a bath or beach towel just like this mm -hmm. and you just want to kind of roll it up. You lay on the floor and you want to put this towel under your neck. Your hands are where hunters are, either on your stomach or on your chest. This actually helps take the pressure off your discs, helps to take the pressure off your joints, and helps you move a lot better. A lot of people with tension, headaches, and or disc problems, or neck pains in general, this can be a great stretch for them. All right, let's break out the chairs. So when I'm sitting like this watching TV, or I'm sitting on the couch, or I'm eating dinner in a, this position, poor posture, you're putting a lot of strain in your lower back. A very simple way to combat that using your towel, you wanna to put it right in the middle of the small of your back. It forces you to sit on your butt bones instead of your tailbone. You actually can get your shoulders back and you're sitting up straight just like this. Dr. Claudia Caprio was our mental health expert keeping us in check, being kind to our mind, and clearing up what it means to be a germaphobe. It's normal to feel a little on edge. In fact, I'm gonna take this off while we're talking here since we are properly socially distanced, but it's, it's okay to feel a little on edge. Absolutely, that's your anxiety working to protect you. Right. So there's a threat right now, and so your body is going into protective mode and survival mode and saying, okay, scan the environment, look to see where there could be germs, and let's try to avoid it. When you're hearing all the time new updates, you know, what's happening with the coronavirus pandemic, people are reopening, other states are having to, you know, pull back because of, you know, measures they didn't take. Uh, feeling a little extra germophobic, as I would say it, um, is okay, and it's not necessarily that I am a germaphobe. Absolutely. Most likely, you are not going to become a germaphobe during this time. More often than not, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, is a predisposition. It's in your family history, and you most likely have had that you most likely would have to have that prior to the experience than developing it during. So just following CDC regulations is not gonna have you become a germaphobe. Right. We even had experts such as registered dietitian nutritionist Monica Moreno advise us on seemingly simple matters such as making the most of your grocery trip. You just gotta have a plan. So, all right, let's say you have your list and it has all the math on it and the recipes and the family sizes, it's great. So you really want to minimize time and time in the store and you want to make sure that everything that you're buying in the store has a really a, a longer shelf life. OK, so for example, bananas can last a lot longer than berries. I'm looking at my own fruit tower here and there's pears and apples, onions, sweet potatoes, because those are all super hard and they don't have a lot of moisture. So they're going to keep a long time. OK, mm -hmm. pineapple lasts a long time. Once you cut it, obviously, it has to be refrigerated. Sure. So, and you can buy frozen fruit and vegetables, which are just as nutritious as the regular, super cheap, and they last, you know, months and months in the freezer. Yes. If there's one good thing that's come out of being in a pandemic and having to stay home in quarantine, it's learning how to take better care of ourselves, and we hope we've helped you do that thus far. When we come back, Morgan Shapiro is going to show you how to continue to work out at home. Plus, a TRX certified trainer is going to show us how to use them in case you impulse bought them throughout quarantine. And we'll even show you how to disinfect your car in case you missed it. Fortunately, places are beginning to open back up, but one of the things that you should still do during the pandemic, after the pandemic, and just for the rest of your life, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Simply get them wet, add some soap, turn off your water, and this is the fun part. We stay here for about 20 seconds, so make sure you get fingertips, tops of your hands, rinse them off, and keep watching SoFlo Health. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we are inside of my home. And just like many of you throughout the pandemic, we've made sure that we want to stay in shape. And Morgan Shapiro, our fitness contributor, has made sure that we can do that by giving us no excuse to not work out. Just because the gyms are closed doesn't mean you can't get a great workout in, and Morgan shows you how. Sweaty and out of breath <laughs> in Morgan Shapiro's living room because we just did our first Instagram live workout. Certified personal trainer and SoFlo Health contributor Morgan Shapiro helped us adapt to quarantine with Instagram live workouts Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 1 p.m. They look and sound like this. Appreciate the fact that the gyms may be closed, but you still have the opportunity to move. One more breath. 
With gyms closed and the need for social distance, Morgan showed us how to make the most of household items in the name of fitness. So we are doing a few stretches using a towel. It really helps visualization and getting that extension that a lot of us don't have on our own. Arms out in front of you, towel the long way. Okay. Now you're simply gonna go back, pulling those arms as far as you can. You may not be able to go all the way down, that's fine and right back forward. As you go slow, you can feel a nice stretch in that chest. As the pandemic became more uncertain, Morgan and I moved over to Zoom to continue the household helpings of health. Most people at home right now have on a pair of socks. Hopefully they're fuzzy, if not regular ones will do. So I'm gonna show you three exercises that you can do with simply socks. Okay. So the first one, you're gonna be on your mat or on the mm -hmm. floor, carpet, something to give you some support. Yep. You're going to be laying back. Now you're pressing your heels into the ground, hands flat on the floor. You're gonna raise your glutes and now you're gonna bring those heels into your glutes, raise them up and slow control down. So right now we are doing a hamstring curl using no equipment. If I've learned anything throughout quarantine, it's that Morgan always has more exercises. Mimicking as it would with a push up. Okay. Yeah, so those are the three with the socks. <laughs> <laughs> what, do we, what do you wanna do next? Okay, I say we move on to backpack now. Let's do it. As you can see, I am dripping in sweat. This is Leo, he's also dripping in sweat. And that's all using the TRX, something you might have purchased, maybe because you wanted to work out at home during the pandemic, or just because it was an impulse buy. Either way, we're about to show you how to use it. First exercise we're gonna do is focus on the lower body, okay. and also that's gonna be for your warm up for today. We're gonna do a TRX squat. Okay. You're gonna have your feet shoulder width apart. You're gonna have your arms completely straight out. You're gonna keep your chest out, chin up, looking towards the tree, and you're gonna squat down low as you can. And when you come up, you're gonna add a little thrust in the glutes, keeping your abs tight. You're gonna go all the way down, keeping everything in alignment, down and up. We're applying body weight mm -hmm. on your legs. Closer forward, the more body weight you apply, so that adds more of a challenging to your squat. You feel the difference, Hunter? Yes. All right, next exercise, we're gonna focus on the lat muscles. Okay. Right here, also the biceps. Facing the TRX, further forward you, you go, the more you target your lats. Right. You're gonna roll in, keeping your elbows close to your obliques as possible. And when you come up, keeping your abs tight and you wanna squeeze those lat muscles and bring it down and put all the weight in the heels. You really wanna focus on contracting the lat muscles. All right, Hunter, next exercise, we're gonna work out the pec muscles. So you wanna make sure your feet are shoulder width apart, your shoulders are gonna be okay. aligned yep. with your whole body, and you're gonna drop, keeping your abs tight, and you're gonna push off, contracting your chest muscles, keeping the TRX handle stable, contracting your, your core, squeezing your chest muscles on the top. So now we're gonna focus on your core, on the transverse abdominis, obliques, we're gonna get all that. We're gonna okay. do a plank, with a reverse crunch. So, you're gonna have your TRX, you wanna pull it up, you wanna shorten it by your calf muscle. Got it. You wanna have one foot in, and then you put the other foot in like that. You're gonna drop to your forearms. Yep. Make sure your knees and elbows are parallel. Yeah. And then you're gonna hold it up, you're gonna engage your core, and you're gonna bend your knees in and bring it out. Knees in and out. Gyms are beginning to reopen, and just like we did here, cleaning in between usage, you should do the same thing at the gym. But in case you're not ready to head back yet, and you did buy something like this, here's a great way to use it. And now, when you go to the gym, you'll know how to use these more properly if you're in a fitness class, Correct. like Leo's. But thanks, Leo. I'm gonna clean up. Yes, for sure. All right. Woo. 999. A thousand. Woo. If you don't have a tree, you could, of course, use your door just like this. Now stay right there because when SoFlow Health returns, we'll show you how to properly disinfect your car and make sure that your groceries don't make you sick. I'm Hunter Frankie with another SoFlow Health reminder. If you need to be around other people, stay at least six feet away. That's proper social distancing. And if you're not sure how far six feet is, I'm six feet tall, so 100 Frankie should do. Now back to some more SoFlow Health. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. 
I'm Hunter Frankie, and I'm in my car because it's the place you spend most of your time besides being in your home. Or maybe the office, but the office isn't really an option right now. And just because your car is clean doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. In fact, my car is actually kind of dirty, but it is safe because we showed you how to properly disinfect it. Take a look. You should only get in your car if you need to go to the grocery store or the doctor, and that's about it. Otherwise, just stay home. So far, we've showed you how to disinfect and clean many different surfaces, and we've talked about high-touch surfaces, but one of those high-touch surfaces is your car, and it has plenty of its own high-touch surfaces, so let's talk about cleaning and disinfecting those to keep you and your family safe. If you look down here, I have some wipes. These are seventh generation, which is more of a natural company, but you can use Clorox wipes as long as they do not have bleach in them. Uh, I've got some isopropyl alcohol, which is pretty safe for almost every surface in your car that isn't upholstery. Then I have a bowl of dish soap. Notice that it's not overly soapy and bubbled up. You don't want it to get into the crevices and then create other issues for you down the past. So right out here on the outside of the car, one of the easiest ones to do is the handle. Make sure you get on the inside as well because when your hand comes in here, you're still brushing along that. High touch surfaces are what you really want to focus on or surfaces near your high touch surfaces. For example, your door handle, that's an easy one. And then I like to do along here because again, this is near a high touch surface. Make sure that you get your window buttons and the ones that you use often and the ones that you don't use often because again, it's about getting everything you just might touch and you're most likely to touch. Now, come on the other side of the car and I'll show you what else we have. Let's start from the top and then right up here is my sunroof or moonroof. All of your radio components, knobs, your push to start button, or if not, you should be cleaning your keys. Let's make our way over to the steering wheel. A simple wipe's gonna be safe for both the leather that is on here and whatever wax coating that this has. New wipe and something else people might overlook, your trunk and your gas cap. And this is a situation where you don't want to let the sun bake this on. So you're gonna to wanna to take a clean microfiber cloth and then wipe that off as well. Don't forget the latch or button under as well. Last but not least, I'm gonna show you some uses for the soap and water that we have here. Slowly wiping down, creating a little bit of friction, but you don't want to scrub because you may lift off any paints or colors of what you have on your car surfaces. Keeping surfaces clean will help, but the best thing you can do is stay home, stay safe, stay socially distanced, and make sure your hands are clean and don't touch your face. So that's why I keep a little bit of hand sanitizer on me when I'm not near a sink with soap and water. But remember, you need to let this dry on its own. Even with the CDC walking back the risks of transferring the virus via touching surfaces, we still thought it was important to show you how to clean and disinfect your car properly, particularly because when it comes to hard, non-porous surfaces, they are still more at risk at transferring the virus than another surface per se. Now, hopefully we don't have to be cleaning things like our groceries for too much longer, but cardboard is still a risk. So actually right here at this counter, we showed you how to do that. The coronavirus pandemic has us rethinking just about everything we do on a regular basis. And that includes groceries. Have you thought about it? Well, we hope you're able to have them delivered to your house, but if you're not and you have to go to the store, either way, Think of your groceries as having glitter all over them. That glitter is the coronavirus, germs, and other bacteria that can be on it on, at any time. But especially at this time when we're taking extra care of what we bring into our homes and what we touch and stay away from our faces, we don't want to get that glitter everywhere, as it often does. Pick a spot where you're going to go through your groceries. In this case, I'm gonna use the top of this counter. This green tape that I have in the middle here is gonna be our line that's designating what's dirty and what's clean. Now, of course, you want to disinfect this whole area. So let's say these are your groceries right here. I only had one bag, so let's say that this is the other bag. All right, so here are your groceries, fresh from the store, full of that imaginary virus glitter that we talked about, because really you don't know what's on it, but we're being extra careful during this time. And I'm going to spray the paper towel with some of my cleaner. Be careful which cleaners you use, so they don't erode the container. Uh, that you are cleaning, but for things like bags and cans, uh, your regular surface cleaner should be just fine. Now I'm going to wipe this down thoroughly. So now everything that comes to this side should have been cleaned already.
Now remember that some fruits and vegetables will begin to ripen faster after you clean them, so make sure not to buy too much, even more reason to only buy what you need and use what you need so that it doesn't spoil on you before you go to use it. Okay, now that we have our clean fruits and veggies, we hope that all of this helps and that you stay safe and healthy by cleaning and disinfecting properly. Make sure that you read the labels of the products that you are using so that you are getting the full effect of the disinfectants. Remember cdc.gov and epa.gov have all of the information that you need when it comes to disinfectants. And right here on SoFlo Health, we're gonna keep you clean and disinfected. Hopefully, we won't have to disinfect our groceries for too much longer. And I also hope that we don't have to wear masks everywhere we go for too much longer. But in the meantime, it's the right thing to do. And that brings up a question. Do you know how to properly wear a very popular mask? Is it blue side in or white side out? Or white side in or blue side out? Well, the answer might surprise you. And we'll show you that when Soflo Health returns. Pretty good show. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and before the break, we asked you if you knew how to properly wear this very popular disposable mask. Is it blue side out or white side out? Well, let me make this very clear. Regardless if you are sick or healthy and you're wearing this mask, it's only intended to wear with blue side out. This mask is designed to keep you healthy and safe regardless of your condition or anybody else's condition with the blue side out only. All right, now that that's clear, that's all we have for this week's episode of SoFlo Health. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to everyone that has been a part of our journey throughout quarantine, through the last 10, 12 weeks, whatever it's been. We've had a good time sharing all this information with you. And as always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlo Health on SoFloHealth.com. And you can find us on YouTube. Follow us using at SoFlo Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And of course, a quick thank you to all of our first responders frontline workers, and everyone in the community that has come together to help us get back to normal as soon as we can, hopefully sooner than later, but we want to make sure that we do it safely. For now, goodbye and good health. Next week, we make it out to the recently reopened Museum of Discovery and Science. Aniva has the keys to curbing your stress eating, and we have so much quality COVID content, we look back at even more on the next episode of SoFlo Health. <laughs>